Greetings. This is a video on Common Alanin and it's going to be presenting information with regards to the proposed alignments that will be associated with its 2011 passage through our solar system. I will also be looking at planetary alignments in the past to correlate some facts representing a different side of the Alanin story. Okay, we're looking at the timeline that's been presented to us in various forums and it is a cleverly constructed timeline as well, I might add. So, you know, hats off to them for presenting this. It actually gives us a little commentary of what to expect as this comet moves through our solar system. But now they're cleverly changing the name of Common Alanin into Nibiru. So the mind control operation with Nibiru that's been on this planet for numbers of years, um, perhaps for eons, um, he's now going to create an extra impact. Now, they want us to join Alanin and Nibiru as one. So let's just play the game just for now. Because apparently this comet is now supposed to have morphed into a planet two to three times the size of Jupiter heading our way. And apparently March the 4th, we're going to be receiving a significant amount of activity as this dwarf planet breaks through the solar ecliptic plane to enter the northern hemisphere. And this date is quite significant for a number of reasons. It involves a common alanin and it also involves a galactic center. Now the reason why I'm making this video and it's going to be a purely astrologically based video is to dispel any fears associated with this comet. Now we do have a significant alignment on this day and it involves a galactic center which is located at 27 degrees Sagittarius. Now this is quite important. Now we do have an interesting feature. The moon is trying the galactic center and at the same time so is Uranus. So what I'm trying to say is that there are going to be some significant earthquakes on this day, perhaps one over 6.8 in magnitude or perhaps two in the sixes. But I just wanted to dispel any fears. There are people out there presenting a timeline of Comet Alanin where it's set to create destruction here on planet Earth in 2011. And the first date is March the 4th. And it just so happens that there is a significant astrologically based date that's been targeted. So it's quite clear that Common Alanin and its projected fear-based um, communications that have been presented on the internet, it's actually a mind control operation to create maximum fear. Now anyone who believes that Common Alanin is creating earthquakes needs to have a long hard look at themselves. Okay, here is the article that's actually created all this talk over the internet. And this article has actually announced to the world and to the gullible public that this Comet Alanin is in fact the infamous planet Nibiru, Planet X, Sackcloth, the Red Kachina, Planet of the Crossing, every other possible name you can think of that will bring doom and destruction, it is Comet Alanin. That's what we're told by uh, this article. And the gullible people have really lapped this one up big time because now they're making videos announcing that we have to head for the hills March 15 because a pole shift is coming. That's right, a pole shift apparently. We have to head for the hills and buy guns and ammo and store our food and take it with us because this doom and destruction is coming 2011 March 15. Well if it were coming March 15 why are we talking about a timeline with further dates if there were a pole shift on March 15? Um, surely a pole shift would be enough to extinct the vast majority of the people on the planet so why would you even have a further timeline? Okay, the, the main theory for this proposed pole shift was regarding Eleanor's position last year and this was supposedly the creator of the 8.8 .8 Chile earthquake that occurred February 27, 2010 as the Comet Alanin was in a fairly similar position as to the alignment that we're looking at right now. And they believe that once this comet moves into the same position, it will have a similar effect. Now they've actually presented a video and they've said that the Earth shifted three degrees off its axis um, after this alignment. Okay, here is a clip from the theoretical physicist Michio Kaka and his explanation as to 
the effects of the very large earthquake that occurred in 2010. Well, first of all, no one's going to fall off the earth. Uh, you're not going to get a shorter work week. However, the earth did shift three inches off its axis, and the day was actually shortened by 1.26 microseconds. Okay, that's an important clip I just played, mainly because there are people out there presenting a theory and hypothesis that this supposed comet created an 8.8 .8 earthquake last year and had created a three degree shift in the Earth's axis, which is quite ridiculous. We just heard Michio Kuku mention a three inch change in the Earth's axis. Now there is a significant difference between three degrees and three inches. If we did have a three degree shift, we would have instant tidal waves and tsunamis worldwide. So perhaps people should actually rethink and perhaps listen to things before making fear-based videos. Okay, we're looking at the February 27 date, 2010. Now, this is the very important part about this um, Alanon story. Now, apparently, we were given the information that Comet Alanon was to form an alignment with Earth and Sun, and thus created the 8.8 .8 earthquake in Chile. Now, if we have a look, there was no alignment on this day. Alanon was not in alignment with Earth and the Sun. However, if we look closely, we can actually see Earth, Sun, and Jupiter were in a very tight alignment and that was the main cause and reason for this earthquake. So for anyone to say otherwise has no basic understanding of celestial influences that would have been in play. And another obvious aspect is the 6.041 AU distance. It actually means that Alanon was further away than Jupiter's orbit. So when you actually consider the size of Alanon and make a comment and say that its alignment would create a large earthquake is completely ridiculous. Okay, looking at the significant alignment with the Earth, Sun, Jupiter. Now this is the most important alignment and I will show why. This will be from 1990 and we'll have a look till present day. So just bear with me. I'm going to be proving how this alignment creates extremely large earthquakes every year. The first date is in 1990 and this is the 16th of July. We had a 7.7 .7 earthquake in Luzon on this day. The 6th of July 1991, we had a 7.0 earthquake in central Peru. The 2nd of September 1992, a 7.7 .7 in Nicaragua. The 9th of October 1993, we had a 7.2 earthquake in Mexico. And the day before, we also had a 7.0 in New Zealand. The 14th of November 1994, we had a 7.1 earthquake in Mindoro, Philippine Islands. Christmas Day 1995, we had a 7.1 earthquake in the Banda Sea. 23rd of January 1997, we had a 7.1 earthquake in southern Bolivia. The 25th of March 1998, an 8.1 earthquake in the Bellany Islands. 3rd of April 1999, a 7.1 earthquake in the Salabas Sea. The 12th of May 2000, a 7.2 earthquake in Argentina. 3rd of June 2001, a 7.2 earthquake in New Zealand. The 28th of June 2002, a 7.3 earthquake in Russia. The 21st of August 2003, a 7.2 earthquake in New Zealand. The 5th of September 2004, we had two earthquakes in Japan, a 7.2 and a 7.4. The 8th of October 2005, we had a 7.6 earthquake in Pakistan. The 15th of November 2006, we had an 8.3 earthquake in Kuril Islands. The 19th of December 2007, we had a 7.2 earthquake in the Aleutian Islands. 11th of February 2009, a 7.2 earthquake in Indonesia. And 27th of February 2010, an 8.8 .8 earthquake in Chile. Okay, I've just shown from 1990 to 2010, that's 20 years, Every time the Earth and Jupiter were in opposition, in other words, the opposite side of the Sun to each other, there would be a very large earthquake. So somehow that they're trying to give us the illusion that Alanon created the 8.8 .8 earthquake last year, and that's been proven incorrect. So um, this information that I've provided has shown that the alignment that created the Chile earthquake last year actually has created a very significant earthquake, 7 plus, and in some occasions 8 plus. Okay, here is the key date that we've been forewarned about, the March 15, 2011, 
and the massive alignment apparently uh, with Alan and Earth and the Sun and this will apparently create a pole shift and potentially mass extinction here on planet Earth. That's what we're told by these fear mongers. Now I can categorically say right now there will not be a pole shift on this day. There will not even be a 5.5 plus earthquake on this day. Um, that's just um, my uh, analysis based on this alignment. We can actually see Alan and not quite moving into the alignment but there is no other celestial bodies that could actually create anything large. Now there is Uranus, we can actually see the line here of Uranus miles away from Alanan. Earth will be moving into that alignment a few days later so again there will not be anything large in terms of earthquakes there will definitely not be a pole shift on this day and anyone actually claiming this should be slapped in the face with a lettuce. Okay now I'm going to be looking at from March 15 onwards and follow this common Alanan's path through our solar system it will move in between Venus and Mercury's orbit and which is quite interesting and the Sun's gravitational pull will seriously affect the path of the comet. Now it may actually uh, disturb and uh, fracture this comet as it's moving through due to the gravitational forces but it is worth noting that uh, the most important part about this comet is its journey in between the Earth and the Sun and we're going to follow this now Okay, now we're going to have a look at a key date. Now I haven't just picked this date just because of the, um, the numerology involved. And this is 11, 11, 11. I've actually picked this date because the comet is actually moving into an alignment where the Earth, Mercury and Venus are involved. And I just find it quite interesting how the first three letters of the name Alanin could be 11. So we've got 11, 11, 11 involved. And we do have the key players Mercury and Venus in an alignment. Now Mercury and Venus are important mainly because that they affect the Earth's translation as these are celestial bodies that interfere with the Earth-Sun translation. So we usually get some sort of uh, volcanic or um, seismic activities when these planets are aligned with the Earth. As Comet Allen will be moving in between the translation of the Sun and Earth. Now what this usually means is whenever a comet or Venus or Mercury moves in between the Earth-Sun translation. We usually get some sort of uh, solar activities, uh, perhaps CMEs, solar flares, uh, new sunspot formations, that sort of thing. So we may see some sort of activities um, like this from Common Alanin's passageway through this translation. I don't feel it's going to be a supremely uh, catastrophic day. I'm just saying that there is more than likely be um, some sunspots that may appear due to this as the comet will affect the Earth-Sun translation and that's just the, the way to look at it. You have to look at it in a 3D sense. Uh, whenever Venus and Mercury pass through the Earth-Sun translation we do get these sorts of distortions through space-time. Okay, I'm going to continue this animation. We're going to follow this comet's trajectory and passageway out of the solar system. The most important date would be the 19th of October. Now the only importance of this date would be the actual um, trajectory through Earth's orbit. Now if this comet is disturbed or fragmented by the gravitational forces of the Sun through its passageway through our solar system we may actually have this comet breaking up or fragments of the comet in and along its own orbit. So the Earth will be moving through this area of dirty space or potential dirty space early November and the key date is here the first of the 11th 2011. So again we've got all these ones lining up 11 11 11 um, coming up also we've got 11 1 11 we've got the name Alanin which could mean 11 so it is uh, interesting to say the least um, but that would be the key date of all the 1st of November. Now there are lots of people who put up dates of March and September and October and I don't think I've heard anyone actually look at this and the actual um, possibilities of what this comet may represent but if this comet is affected by the Sun's gravitational forces we may have a bit of an issue um, but a pole shift um, I find it extremely hard to believe. Okay that's my comet Allen and video. I think the only dates of importance would be November 1st and November 11. They'll be the only dates of concern. 
The November one will probably be the most dangerous as the earth will be moving through the wake of the tail and there perhaps may be something there, uh, who knows. But I don't think there's going to be anything to worry about in terms of pole shift, uh, ELE extinction events and all the scenarios that they're going to be painting at us. Uh, there are people in so much fear at the moment on the internet, it's at almost pandemic levels. It's only going to get worse. So anyone fearing March, April, June, September and October really need to have a long hard look at themselves. So I thought I'd put a little video clip at the end of this and that's Deep Impact just to make these people feel right at home. Thanks for watching.